Hi everyone, it's Andy from Albie Headquarters and I finally got it done. Here it is. Here is part two of building the Dosswork 116 scale SDKFC 251D. Now part one of the video is where I did all of the lower part of the hull, the engine, the transmission, all that super detailing that was inside this because this kit has a full interior inside as well. This video is going to deal with building all the uh, upper stru structures, painting, weathering, detailing all that stuff on the inside after the engine and all that stuff was put inside. I had a blast doing this kit. This kit is absolutely incredible. The detailing, wow, it's, it's just an amazing, you'll see it as I go through the actual build on it there. So this video is just a little bit longer than some of my Normans because I go a little bit more in depth like in doing the tracks and the weathering, things like that. But I think you'll enjoy it because I had a lot of fun doing it. So. so enough talking with that, let's get over to the video. So let's get started. Okay, guys, let's start off uh, episode two of building the DOS Work 116 scale SDKFC 251. And we're going to do that with the tracks. Now, you can see here I've built one set of tracks off camera. That's uh, to help me, uh, you know, see how they go together, see if there's any techniques I can learn to help you guys out. You'll also notice, too, that there is one track here that's got a full black mark on the top. Uh, that is because that is removable. That one has not been glued into place. So when I go to take these off later, I can find the track very easily and paint them up. Also, there is no rubber on these outer road wheels here. That's why they are not making full contact with the track. But uh, remember, I was going to put those on separately later on. And one other quick little update on this is here's my second set of tracks to the other side. You'll see a smaller line right here. This is strictly... Uh, this is my 20th track, so I'll put one at the 40th track, and then I'll know how many tracks to actually start producing for it. The kit calls out 55 in the instructions. I made 55 the first time, and it was actually just a little bit too big, so I went with 54 tracks, as you can see right here. Now I'm going to show you the tracks, and we won't take too, too much time with this. I want to show you how they come off. So the, the main part of the track, very simple. You just get your very thin uh, nippers, and try to push the nipper in as far as you can. You're less likely to pull anything off. Then when you get the piece off here, there is just a little bit of cleanup. A little sanding stick. You see there's a little bit uh, of a burr right there. And then just the slightest little bit just on those rings there. So this is the easy part right here. The next part getting off is the actual connecting point. And I'm going to zoom in close here to show you the part that's uh, a little bit of fun. And it's this little connector right here. It actually drops down below just slightly. So the easiest way to clean it off, and you do need to have it completely clean or the track won't make full contact. We're gonna come in here like this from the side, uh, both the top and the bottom. And the reason I'm going a little bit more in depth on the track here, is I've had lots of customers come in my store while I'm building this and asking me about the track and really wanting to go in depth with it. So we pop this off here and the, the two middle dots, those are supposed to stay there. So we can either take our nippers and hit it like this and maybe even just a touch in the front. And you can see it cleans it off pretty well right there. We might have to slightly just do this. And once that track gets cleaned up, remembering we have to do both sides because there are four connection points on that track. And I, I know that seems daunting, but it actually didn't take too long. You just want to make sure you clean them up. I was even using this as like a little bit of like a knife too, the edge of my thing, just to clean it off. And the way this works is we'll take our our new piece of track here that we're working on and very simple you take your next track you push this into place just like that and you can see that there's a shape that will only fit one direction I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here just take this and push it into place and you see because we cleaned it off right there it mates up nicely then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the tiniest little bit of cement and I'm just gonna brush it right around that leading edge there 
and that locks all of the track together nicely. Now you see it works pretty good without gluing it. I just find that if you're gonna do the entire run, and I tried it already, I tried about 30 track links put together without glue, and I started to have a few separate. So just the tiniest little bit of glue right in that crack there, squeeze it down really tight, it, 10 seconds and it's ready to go again. So as you can see here, I've got about, uh, about 30 something pieces of track. So I need about 20 more. And I'm gonna go ahead and assemble all of those right now. And then we'll come back and paint them and start working on the rest of the hull. Okay, so I just finished up the tracks and we're gonna start working on the walls. And one thing I should point out to you too, earlier in the video, I called out that there was 54 tracks. And uh, there actually was 55. I was counting the pads. Uh, when I was doing the count and I forgot I needed to add the last pad in once you hook the, the pieces together. So there are 55 tracks on each side. Now what I need to do is I need to go in here and I need to sand off all of these injector pin marks. And you can see I've almost got these gone in here. There's a little bit of this center area gets covered up with a panel that you see on this one, but I wanna take my time and clean up all of these with some sanding. Once that gets done, I'm going to paint these interior color or the dark yellow color and that is because once I get those on like this I can snap that into place and you see it'll work as a, a mask to paint all of this outside here. I'll have to mask a little bit up here but all the road wheels and stuff can be all be painted right in place without much masking. As for the inside painting we'll have this inside painted but in here I just have taken a piece of cardstock and cut it to wrap around this I'll block this off and then I can paint the inside of the uh, the walls of the piece. I've also started to assemble the little bins on the side. Now I'm leaving the rifles out because uh, I want to paint those separately. I think it'll just be a lot, lot easier. You can see there are little pins inside there. I'm going to leave the leather pad off. We'll paint that separately because all of this is the dark yellow body color. The leather will be painted separately and then glued into place. So let me do this now. I'm going to go ahead and get these sanded and then painted and paint also the inside of all this, the dark yellow color, as well as all of the little bins that are on both sides of the vehicle. And then I'll come back and show you how it all goes together. And here we are. So you just saw me put the paint on the inside walls. I've also attached all of the side armor for the vehicle and painted that all the proper color. Did not do it on the outside yet because this is gonna be very, very simple to do. Um, and I can do that after the rest of this is all done. Now I still need to add the rubber pad, or excuse me, the leather pads, not rubber pads, leather pads, plus the rifles, things like that. But that's all kind of stuff that we can do afterwards. What I want to mess with now is building up the floor and the way the floor is going to fit into place here, I kind of don't want to glue all of this together. I want to see that if I can get this in here and I'll kind of show you as I'm fiddling around with it is to see if I can get this in here in such a way that it'll be removable later very easily. And I was dry fitting this earlier before I started filming and the fit is very, very good on this. And this will fit right inside here. Whoops, gotta poke this down around that transmission piece and then push it forward just like that. Get a nice tight fit on that. And you see how this, how this is looking here. Now, one of the things we have to do is we have to build up these bins and here's one that's unbuilt. This is how it comes. And then you attach the front here, which is the like stowage area. This is gonna get dropped into place down here one of the bins overlaps between these two panels and they want you to glue them into place, which if you did that, you're gonna glue all of this panel into place as one piece. But I think it'll work out that I can glue the, the one bench back here and only half of the other bench. And this should be able to, you know, hopefully come up out like this, because don't forget there's gonna be a back on here. And then same thing with this. I'll glue all the other little parts into place here, like the little floorboards. But hopefully once we remove this, this should be able to pop out and I can still show everybody what it looks like underneath all that stuff. So that's, that's the plan. We'll see how that actually works. 
letting you in on it as we go. Now, I've also gone ahead and just built up, there's just three little parts to build up these seats here. Uh, I will paint those separately because of, you know, the colors that we're going to need. But what I'm going to do on all this is I'm going to get these panels all glued into place here. And I'm going to get like the transmission cover like this here. All of that glued into place. We're going to go ahead and paint that and leave it in place. We'll see how it actually works out right there. And then see, imagining that the back is on here, that I can actually remove that all out. So let me go ahead and get all these bins and things built up. And we'll drop them into place. And then I'll come back and let's see if it all can work. Here it is. So I think it's actually going to work that way. So I've gone ahead and assembled the floor. Uh, here it is back here. This pops right into place. I think I'll be able to constantly put that in and out. I also got the, uh, the front done too, that we can get that in and out. This one's a little bit tighter and you just gotta be careful not to knock off anything. But what I did was I did go ahead and sand the inside edge here. Makes it a little bit easier to go in and out. But after I did that, um, I think it's going to actually work pretty well. Kind of drops right back into place. You got to mess with it a little bit uh, to get it around all those pieces, but it'll go in. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and paint these and also paint this up. I did create all of the wooden benches here too that I am not going to attach right now because I want to paint those separately. And I'm going to show you how I do the, the wood grain. Now, as for the inside of it here, the leather part of the back of the seat, I'm gone ahead and just painted like a semi-gloss black. I wasn't sure if it was a brown leather or a black leather. I saw some of the modern day ones, which I know isn't always accurate, but they look good with black leather. So that's what this, uh, this vehicle is gonna get. Also, I have the seats like I told you about. I will go ahead and attach those onto the, uh, the floor here and we paint that up as well. And I'll get all of these in place like I showed you earlier. And then it's just a matter of hoping once everything gets painted. That okay, now I am going to show you how I'm going to get the wood grain effect I want for my back seats. Now the back seats in the 251 were wooden slats. And everything that I can see, I don't believe they were painted. I believe they were natural wood. Um, it's hard to see in World War II photos and everything that you see now, museum-wise, doesn't appear to have any type of paint on, at least anything that I've seen. So this is how I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, I want them to have a little bit of a worn effect, but not completely beat up. So here is the, the final uh, the look that I'm going for. To start off with, I'm going to take XF-59 and spray the entire thing, which is the way it's been done right here. Now, I'm going to use Tamiya's brown panel liner, and I know the bottle is a, a little torn and frayed. I use this uh, in the black quite a bit. So let me zoom in on the piece first. Okay, that's a little better. Get a little closer on it, and I'm gonna, just gonna take our brown panel liner and kind of, let's just call it haphazardly. There's no real way to do it. Just want to put it on you can put it on kind of heavy and then just start blending it out and you'll notice that 
because it's enamel and sitting on the acrylic that it naturally flows into all the little nooks and crannies and starts to blend together. And you wanna just make sure you just got a, a coat over the entire thing. And I know some of the areas look a little bit darker and heavier than others. And to a degree, you want that. So what we're gonna do is let this dry for just a little bit. Normally I would want it to dry for maybe like 15, 20 minutes, just so uh, it makes the black go a little bit easier on there, but I can kind of show you. So we're gonna take the black panel liner right now and just touching it to the edges of the cracks because I want those to be more of a, a shadow effect. And you see how it just wicks down the line. And easiest way to do it is on the edge. And then when it comes to the middle, just have the smallest little amount on there and just touch down the center. And I know there'll be a tiny little bit that'll get up on the brown, but that is not gonna be a problem either because when it does get on there with the brown, we're gonna go back over it with the brown and it kind of blends without getting into the crack now. You don't wanna go near the crack. Anytime you have this area that's got a little bit of that, just blend it in. Make a darker brown area right there or on these edges here. And as it starts to dry, it's going to pull out and move that out of the way and we're gonna get an effect like this. And this is not even 100% dry yet, but you get the idea. We're starting to look like we have natural wood boards that are, you know, been weathered a little bit, been set on a little bit. Okay, you're gonna notice some pooling around the edge right here. And that will all go away when we put the second layer of the brown coat on. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that after this dries and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once two coats have been applied. And here it is. Here is the second coat of the wood grain, uh, wood effect, whatever you want to call it on that, installed inside the vehicle. You also notice I've got all of the floorboards in and all of this is still removable. So uh, there's a tiny little bit of a lip right here that would be better if we glued it down. But for the, the sake of being able to pull it out, I can live with that right there. And you can see how the wood is dried nicely. And I've also, in the back, I've started to put uh, dirt effects and a little bit of staining in the back, which I have not done up here. You can see the stark contrast on it. I will go ahead and do that. And I'm showing you how I put the pigments and washes on. Now I'm using a little bit of brown wash. This is just to me as brown wash right out of the bottle, thin down a little bit. And it'll go on kind of dark to start, but you'll watch how as it dries, it blends in very nicely. pigment powder like I said earlier this is light sienna and it'll dry completely different it'll dry just like the back of the vehicle looked so I will go ahead and finish putting dirt and grime and stuff all on the inside of the cab here. And I'll come back once it dries and show you what it all looks like. Okay, while well, the mud and all that stuff that I put into the cab dries, and I'll show you that once it is dried, I figured I'd start working on these front parts, like this fender here. And the fenders are pretty simple. They're gonna somehow mount right on the side just like that. Oh, just as easy as that actually. And then we've got one for the other side too. Now you'll notice one of them is painted already. And that is because I've decided all the parts that I start attaching from here on out, um, other than the outside body, I think where I can still do some painting separately, I'm gonna paint these parts all individually, the dark yellow, and I can do the weathering in place, but this way I, I avoid putting any overspray over anything. 
Um, I did have these out too, because I'm gonna finally glue these braces into uh, position. And also I need to glue this brace and paint it into position. This is the, the top brace that will hold this. So glued two pieces together here, your front uh, armor plate, as well as I just placed these into position just so I can paint them as I go. I'm gonna obviously leave them so you can open it. And then once I get the fenders glued on, I will glue this front armor on. And you see how perfectly lines up. We've got our red radiator cap right there underneath. And I'm just gonna take my time to make sure all of this stuff fits very, very well and in the exact spot. So that's why I'm gonna do that off camera. I think it's gonna be simple, but it's gonna just have to be make sure like when you put this on that it lines up into the groove inside here. Things like that, that we wanna just make sure everything lines up because if one little thing is not lined up, you know the next item is gonna look even worse because you're trying to get it on. And once I get this, uh, this piece and all the fenders glued into place, the next step will be to attach the side stowage boxes somehow they go back over in here and then there is a front one that will mount just like this underneath the the armor so you can see it's all coming together rather quickly here and then of course the final things will be to put these in the back just like actually they go back here because there's another piece of armor that goes up front here so Okay, it's taken a little bit of time, but I've gotten all of the front armor on. Of course, we'll give you a little 360 once we're done with everything here. But uh, it did take a little bit of time. Uh, there's a lot of faceted little pieces here that you do want to be very, very careful, making sure that you test fit everything as you go. And I found that it was good to, once you get a spot thing glued into place, make sure it's nice and secure and square, and then test the next couple of pieces going forward to make sure you don't have any problems uh, and everything will turn out really nicely. With that being done now, now it's time to go ahead and attach the stowage bins on the side. And there's a little groove on the, uh, the outside of the vehicle here that you just gotta find your groove, so to speak. And then you'll be able to lock the, uh, the stowage bin into place. It'll go on just like that. And then once that gets glued, uh, I can go ahead and attach the upper armor. And it too, here's the other side of there. Here's the groove. It'll ride right on in here too. So you just have to line that up, make sure it's nice and square. And then we can glue that into place. Yeah, just about, there's a little lip it's catching on. There it goes, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that on and then I will show you how the rear uh, portion of the vehicle gets mounted into place. Okay, now I'm using a telescopic uh, clip with a little bit of foam sponge torn as a tip on it here. We're gonna zoom in here and I am going ahead and putting scratches inside the driver's compartment area here. Just going down the line and just lightly adding some scratches. You see how it's gonna give a little wear and tear to it. Uh, I'll also do that on the uh, the actual back area of it here. I just pulled it out right now. It's just a little easier to get at it. Okay, I carefully, carefully flipped the vehicle over. Uh, and that is because in the instructions, they call out when it's time to put this on that it is easier to do it while it's upside down. And they are 100% right because trying to do it the other way, it's very... It's just awkward trying to get it on right there. So what I've done here is I've built the, the back. It's just a couple of uh, levers here and the, the little handles here. All the hinges and stuff are in place already. And I will go ahead and glue this right into place. Once that gets glued into place, I also have the uh, tow hitch, which making sure it's gonna go in right, but actually it's pretty easy to do because there's a half moon that can only allow it to go in a certain way. But you wanna put this in around that, so uh, a little bit easier to put the back in first. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that into place, and then I have the two top little angle pieces that go down here to put on after I put this on. Okay, I've got the vehicle flipped back around on its uh, wheels, and now I can go ahead and glue the faceted pieces of armor on to the back of the vehicle. Now, right now I'm just dry fitting them and just to show you guys how they're gonna fit, we're gonna glue these down in a minute. This will get glued in just like this. And then that other piece will get dropped in. 
just like that. And this is where the uh, the back MG42 will mount. Also speaking of MG42s, I've also put this, uh, this brace up in front of where the other MG42 will mount. I'm gonna pull these off for just one second because I wanted to show you. If you're careful, you can still get the seats and other parts out. So you, you have to put them in at an angle because you can't slide them out the back like I was doing earlier. So if you're careful, slide it in there, give it a little wiggle and it'll kind of drop itself into place. The front will come out too. It is a, uh, a much bigger process as you can imagine, but uh, as long as you're careful, you still can slide it in and then drop it into place down in there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and get these glued on. I also have to go ahead and glue the side doors on as well as the little handrail that goes around the inside. I'll do both of those, they're very simple. And also I'm watching the footage of me putting the back plate on and you'll notice that I did not paint the bottom of the vehicle. I am gonna paint the bottom of the vehicle when I go out. I've been kind of messing around with painting as I have extra paint in my brushes playing with it but i will put the uh, the camel on the bottom uh or the dark yellow because that's usually where i test out my camouflage pattern and see how i like it and it's easier just to flip it around it's a real piece of plastic with paint on it and i can test to see how that is going to work okay guys here it is it's uh coming along right now uh what i've done for the last couple of hours is after i was uh, i filmed the last scene and i was editing it on camera i started to notice basically a lot of things that I kind of flubbed on, uh, little things that I needed to do a little better sanding, some seams that I needed to push together a little better, things like that, which it's amazing that when you're, when you're working on a model, at least I think, you look at it a million times, you don't see all this stuff, and then when you put it on camera, they stick out like a sore thumb. So minor stuff, but you know, some more sanding I had to do. Plus I put on all, like, all the little, little um, tie downs, all the, uh, Back here, the fire extinguishers, the width indicators with the mirror up front. The tools are just in place right now. I just wanted to see how they're gonna fit in the place. I also put things on like the tow hooks up front, things like that, all the little accessories that I think could get painted in place, uh, which I'm gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the dark yellow over the uh, all the pieces and give it one final good clean coat on there. Uh, I'll paint the rubber on the tires later on. That'll be one of the last things to do just before I put the tracks on. Then, I can go ahead and start doing the camouflaging on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the dark yellow and then I'll show you how I put the camouflage on.
Okay guys, you just watched me put all of the paint and decals and stuff on. Now it is time to go ahead and put the rubber on the outer road wheels here because we have the tracks in place now. And this will just basically snap right into place. Also, don't forget to do the uh, the drive sprockets, the same size as these outer road wheels, and that needs to get put on. And I've got the other two that I'll right off camera that I'll go ahead and do. Plus, also, I'm going to go ahead and build up the spare that they have on the side here. We'll maybe hang it from there or something like that. Once I get all of the rubber on and the tracks on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and start the weathering process, which the first thing we're going to do is start chipping it up. Okay, now we're going to do a little chipping. So I'm going to try my hardest to keep my hand out of the way of the camera. So we got really close up right here. And I'm using a really fine tip brush. And I'm using the chipping color that I mix up. I always keep a bottle of this on hand. And we are just going to create some scratches. Some random scratches going down the side of the vehicle. Can also see if I get my hand out of the way here. Create one. I like doing this with the little dots, and then a longer scratch. And I'm just going to show you the the basics. I'm not going to show you the whole thing being done done this on other videos before but just showing you how it's going to happen here and i've got a lot to do because obviously in 16 scale you got a lot more now i'm taking some dark yellow and which is our base color remember this is what the germans would have painted the camouflage across on it so we're going to create a little bit of a scratch effect that it went through the paint and maybe not all the way down to the bare metal that we're going to get that that look of a uh, really deep scratch. And we can even drag it a little bit across the, the red brown there. Like a real long deep scratch, but really got deep in the middle there. And that's basically how I'm going to do most of my scratching. We're gonna come up on the top here and create a bunch of little tiny chips with the edge of the brush. Maybe every once in a while, you can bring one down a little bit. Guys jump over the sides of these things all the time, and they've got all their equipment on. You can imagine stuff getting dragged down and scratching the side of the vehicle. Things like that. So that gives you the basics how I'm going to actually do that. Now I'm going to spend the next couple of hours uh, and do the entire vehicle. And then I will show you the rust and some of the dirt effects that we will put over this to kind of blend it all together. Also want to show you too, we can use our foam in some of these areas that we want a more, more rubbed off area of paint, not just scratches, but one that's seen a lot of wear and tear. We can do it over the areas where we had put the little scratches and kind of blend it together and get a, a much bigger rub area. And you can see how that starts to really look like paint coming off on the vehicle. Okay, right now I'm applying a coat of enamel thinner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little streaking grime, a little rust and a little dark rust, some streaks that I'm gonna create on here. And I know it's a bit of a strong reflection, but you'll see what it looks like once it actually dries. It's just a matter of putting down the coat of thinner and then taking little drops, putting it up on the top areas that, are, have, that have scratches on them. And then once it's uh, on there a little bit, you can go ahead and take a wide brush and softly pull it down and you'll get the nice little streaking effect that you want on the side of the vehicle. Here is what those rust streaks look like now that they're dried on the vehicle. Uh, I'm gonna pull back a little bit right now and start working on the tracks and the, uh, the front wheels. And right now I'm using uh, dust and dirt deposits, light dust from AK. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like right here. And what I'm going to do now is mixing a little bit extra thinner in it. I'm going to put kind of a kind of a heavy coat. I mean not not too much, but we're going to spread it out a lot 
over all of the tracks and especially down here on the bottom tracks where you see dirt deposits would start to form. And I'm also gonna go spin the tracks and do in between each one of the tracks as well. Here, I'm just kind of showing you how I'm applying it. And it doesn't really matter how careful you are at this point because you're gonna be knocking off some of this excess stuff. That's why I have plenty of cotton swabs around right now and dipping them in the uh, enamel thinner because this is enamel based stuff. Can even get a little bit on the road wheels. Blend it in and once that dries a little bit, we can start knocking it off like the pad itself because I want the pads to be clean. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this around because I've done this side already. And this has already had a chance to dry and you can see the effect that we'll get, including the front road wheel. The road wheel, the nice thing about that is you put the product on and then you take a cotton swab and you knock the excess off the high points. So you get basically just dirt deposits inside the track, or excuse me, the, uh, the tread. So with it inside the tread, it looks more natural and then I just have to go back and start cleaning off any of the excess on it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the dirt deposits on the, tr the rest of the tracks, as well as the front wheel on the other side, which actually I can show you the front wheel too on how this is gonna go on. It goes on, like I said, kind of thick, starting in here and you put it on. And don't worry about, it's better to put it on thick basically because then you can take the excess off. This way you don't miss any of the areas that you would uh, normally find dirt. So I'm gonna completely cover the wheel in it. And I'll go in there in a little bit and get, get a, bit, a little bit closer, but I don't wanna get my hand in the camera way. And then like I said, just start taking the cotton swab in anywhere that you don't want a lot of dirt effect. Just come back over it and start removing it. And I, it's better to let the stuff dry, but then you can see you can kind of do this with the, uh, the tread and it'll leave behind just dirt deposits inside the actual tread where you'd imagine. And you can see even on this side, it's already starting to dry and you can start knocking off any of the excess. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and then I'll come back and show you the next weathering step. Also, while the tracks are drying, I wanna put a little bit of the dirt effect inside areas where you'd expect it to build up. And you want a little bit around the edge here, a little bit thicker. Once again, we're gonna be wiping a lot of this off, but it'll create a nice effect of, hey, there was dirt and stuff kicked up on here and it's collected in like in the uh, the hinges here or in this little, this little area in here. This stuff's drying pretty quick, so we'll actually go right now and start hitting it with the, uh, the swab. Okay, now that I've done all of that weathering all over everything, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take Tamiya's XF55 deck tan, and I'm gonna put it in my airbrush and lightly watered it down, maybe a little bit more than I normally will. And I'm just gonna put a very, very light mist coat. In fact, I'm gonna keep the airbrush probably about 18 inches away from the model. And this will create a soft little dust effect over the entire thing. And the last effect I'm gonna put on here is Ammo by Mig's Lucky Varnish Ultra Matte. I'm gonna spray a light mist coat over the entire thing. This will take away any of the little streaks and stuff that we don't want on there that are kind of shiny. So this will blend everything together nicely. And here we are, here is the completed model. And I just did a few other little minor weathering things on here. I did put a touch a touch of the dark rust wash up inside the tracks to blend with the, the dirt. Uh, it's more of a brown color, so it's not really rusty. It's kind of like a 
earthy brown. Also took my metallic pigment powder and lightly just hit some of the edges in the corners here. Kind of gives a, a glint of uh, steel look to the uh, little pieces like the bolts and little edges, things like that on it there. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you inside because I also built up some uh, accessory things from Value Gear and filled up some kind of in the back there. And I'll also put it on a turntable. Turntable is a little small, but I'll be able to give you a 360 of the entire build. Here is a quick look inside. Uh, you'll see some of the Value Gear stuff like the tarps, the extra uh, MG42 um, ammo, stick grenades, things like that. Also, you can still see down in here. And remember, this is still all removable does all come out and I know that because it's fallen out on me a couple of times when I flipped it over to do some uh, of the other painting okay so let's get it on the turntable so you can get a 360 look here is the uh, the spare road wheel that I wired on to the the little handles that are up on top there as we come around here talk a little bit about the actual vehicle as you can see it is an absolutely incredible looking uh, a model kit so much detail remember all of that engine detail that's inside here and the the uh, transmission all of that stuff just absolutely stunning looking Well, there you go, guys. There is a look at how the Dosworth 16 scale SDKFC 251 goes together. And like I said earlier in the video, or multiple times through the video, it's an incredible kit. The fit and finish are wonderful on this kit. And you see, it turns into a beautiful display model once you get it all done. So guys, I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. And please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming including I will finally have samples of my brand new M10 and Achilles. The final versions are coming within the next couple of days and I'll have a video on uh, both of those. So thanks for watching.